Welcome back. Um, let's go ahead and continue by looking at a few more of these problems. And, and like mentioned earlier, next time we meet in class, uh, the ones that we don't complete here, we'll complete together in class. All right, I just want to look at 13 with you real quick and make some comments about that. Um, when we do go to differentiate with respect to time, um, notice the two terms over here. This term right here will uh, get its own differentiation rule, and this term right here will have to use um, another differentiation rule. All right, looking at this term right here, first of all, notice the 2 pi is a constant multiplier. So it's very similar to uh, what we did uh, back in 11 and 12, where we took the pi out, but this time we're going to be taking 2 pi out. Okay, well, what's left of that term is the product of r and h. So as you might guess, that's going to require on this term for us to use um, not only the constant multiplier rule with the 2 pi, but um, uh, also the product rule for differentiation here with the r and the h, the two different variables. So that's going to take a little work. Um, at the same time, along the way, when we differentiate this term here, notice the 2 pi again is another constant multiplier to be pulled out. And uh, then also just differentiating um, r squared here uh, wouldn't require the product rule. Okay. Um, also, um, could have on 11, uh, as opposed to what I did here pulling the pi out, I could have just left the pi where it was. So, for example, let's talk about 13. Um, if I notice that this is just the simple power rule on r squared, I very well could, without pulling out the 2 pi and using the constant multiplier rule, I could very well just multiply 2 times 2 pi, uh, getting 4 pi, uh, reducing the exponent by 1 to r, and then multiplying by dr over dt. So if you prefer that option, that's absolutely fine too. It's just a personal preference on how you want to handle pi. That's all. Okay, let's look at the back. So if you guys want to go ahead and turn that over. Let's go ahead and look at number 16. That's a little bit different than what we've done so far. Okay, so notice that the equation is Pythagorean Theorem, and there's going to be a couple of application problems that we're going to be working with that um, when we read the context of the problem determines that we're going to use Pythagorean Theorem. And once we've established that that's the equation we're going to be using, uh, we will then have to differentiate it with respect to time. So we might as well go ahead and look, focus on that skill right now. Okay, so I'm going to bring in the derivative operator to um, all terms. So I'm going to do a little bit different here because I have more space. So I'm going to bring in d over dt in front of all the terms. Again, your choice, like done previously, just one derivative operator outside of a bracket, or you can actually bring in the derivative operator uh, and place it in front of all the terms. Okay. So this just tells me what I need to do. I need to find the rate of change of a squared with respect to time. Well, variables disagree. So go ahead and proceed using the chain rule. So derivative of the outside function is 2a times, that's the times, the derivative of a, the inside variable, with respect to time. So this is 2a times dA dt. Plus, moving on to this term, well, it's very similar to this term, just with the variable b. So derivative of the outside, 2b, times the derivative of b with respect to time equals, again, same thing here, we would get 2c dc dt. Okay. Now, right here for the purpose of what I want to do with this video, I just want to practice implicitly differentiating with respect to time. That is, I'm not solving for anything. So as far as I'm concerned right now for what we're doing, we're done. Uh, when we do start to put it all together and look at the application problems, um, it might become necessary to solve this equation for either uh, the variable a, b, or c, or maybe one of the rates, um, d, a, d, t, d, b, d, t, or, d, or d, d, c, d, t. But um, that problem will determine, determine that at that time. Okay. All right. Um, let's go ahead and look at another Pythagorean theorem. I think 20 would be a good one to look at. Um, notice notice uh, right here that if we go to differentiate with respect to time, um, the x squared is easy enough, 2x dx dt. Uh, this would become 2y dy dt. Um, but when you move over here, notice that's a constant. And the rate of change with respect to any variable of a constant is just going to be 0. So that's how that one would look differently than, say, this one up here, 16, that we just, just did. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and look at, uh, let's look at 17. I 
I, I think it's good that um, you guys bring in the derivative operator, whether you do it this way outside of a big bracket for the whole equation or whether you bring it in for every term. So that's a good thing to show. Okay, applying the de derivative operator to P, uh, the rate of change of a perimeter with respect to time is equal to, okay, sometimes this kind of throws students off, but um, just think of this as a constant multiplier. Or you could use the power rule if you wanted, but I think it's easy enough to look at it as a constant multiplier. This is two times the rate of change of L with respect to T. So two times DL DT. And then likewise, two times here DW DT. Okay. Okay, so a quick comment about problem number 25. So if you wanted to look down there at that one, If you're asked to find the rate of change uh, with respect to time on that area equation for, say, a rectangle, uh, area equals length times width, um, just kind of having a plan there, um, that uh, derivative would require us, finding that derivative rather, would require us uh, using the product rule. Uh, since we have uh, the variable L and W, neither of which agree with time, um, we're multiplying, we have two factors. so. Uh, 25 would require the product rule when we go to attempt that. Uh, but let's go back and look at 18 as our last problem. Okay. Uh, notice the one-third there. I would have preferred to stack it as a fraction. I just didn't have the availability of the software that allowed me to do it. But I would prefer to see that as one-third uh, pi. So just kind of looking at that real quick. and. Uh, I would prefer to see it as pi over 3, uh, remembering that the 1 in front, the coefficient, uh, allows us to write it as 1 third pi. Uh, and then again, I didn't stack it as a fraction. But anyway, it's a constant. Uh, 1 third pi is a constant multiplier. So if you want to pause the video, attempt it on your own, and then come back and check it, I think that would be a good idea. So the change in volume with respect to time is related to, equal to, uh, coming over here, pi over 3 is my constant multiplier. I'm going to leave it outside of a bracket. Um, some would take the pi over 3 and um, have, it, uh, have it be a multiplier on r squared and involve this as f right here. And then this factor would be the g. So this would be f and this would be g. It's not, you could take the pi over 3 with r squared, you just wouldn't take the pi over 3 with both r squared and h um, in that case. Okay, but for me I'm just going to kind of unclutter it. That way I can focus my attention on r squared h. So product rule first times the derivative of the second h with respect to time dh dt plus the second factor h times the derivative of r squared with respect to time, which would be 2r times dr dt. Okay, and a little bit of cleanup here. You could distribute the pi over 3 back through both terms if you wanted to. Just really depends upon what the application problem is asking us to do, and that really determines how I handle pi over 3. Okay, and this is similar to one of the first examples we did. No cleanup on this first term. Okay, and the second term would have us write 2RH dr dt. And again, like mentioned before, um, I, you know, we're not solving for anything just yet because we don't know the context of the question. So for us and our purpose and just focusing on the skill of differentiating implicitly with respect to time, um, we're good. We're, we're fine. So uh, the rest of these, um, whatever you want to do, but um, if you want to attempt to finish them tonight and check them uh, tomorrow or whenever we next meet, that's fine. Otherwise, there is going to be class time dedicated um, to you guys finishing these um, together. So I'll see you then.